Live. You live. Live, live, live. Hi, everybody. This is Jennifer Evans at Periwinkle Art Studio, and I am thrilled to be with you all today live via the Gordon Center page. Thank you for setting this up, everybody. Um, we are going to be painting a crocus which if you take a walk outside, you'll notice all sorts of spring blooms that are popping up, wonderful, delicate little flowers that are so colorful. So what we're going to do is use acrylic paint with some mixed media techniques to paint a crocus. Mixed media is, I'm a mixed media artist, that means that I like to combine more than one medium. So we're gonna be using acrylic and I like to add in other elements that's often collage or water-soluble crayons or a variety of different things to achieve a layered effect. So while we're waiting for everybody to come on, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Please comment and ask questions. I have my son Grant here and he is going to be monitoring the comment feed from his phone to make sure that everybody who has any questions about anything that I'm doing, um, he's going to verbalize that to me so that I can answer questions. So please say hi. Say hi to Grant. Let us know that you're there. This is a different format for me and I'm really missing being in the classroom with my participants and painting along with you all. So please um, join in. Um, if you're watching this later on on the replay, still comment and post questions. I will get around to commenting and posting as well as feel free to snap a little photo and put that in the comment thread. That's what we did last week on my Periwinkle Art Studio page. We painted sunflowers so you can go back and look at that video if you're inspired to paint some more. And um, I really loved seeing people post their work as they were finishing over the next a uh, couple of hours and days. So that was super fun. Okay, so we're gonna flip the camera so that I can explain what we're gonna do. How's that looking? It's looking good. We can see that and that. Okay, perfect. If we need to square this up a little bit, um, we tried to get the camera so it's coming over my left shoulder, but um, if we need to zero in on anything, just give us some direction on what we're doing. So what you can start with is a canvas panel. This is a 5x7, or you can grab a 5x7 piece of paper. Thick paper works best, either Bristol or mixed media paper or watercolor paper. I'm going to be using this Strathmore mixed media paper um, seems to be a handy size. So I went ahead and put a dark green background over the whole thing and let it dry, but I'm gonna demonstrate that. This is just kind of to, to give a head start so I can talk to you all while, um, while you're doing your background. We're gonna start with a really dark green if you're looking to, to go for a dark green and you don't have one, mixing just a little touch of red into green will really darken up that green and give you a dark, like a mossy green. The other one I went edge to edge, but in the interest of time here, I'm gonna not go to the edge. I'm just gonna leave it stopped short like that. which is different, it's just a different effect. And whichever way you do it, it does not matter. I always have a paper towel handy. And while this is drying, I'm going to talk to you about the color palette. So we're gonna start with acrylic and let me just show you what this is based on. Okay, so this is a bigger piece that I did a couple weeks back. And I, uh, this was inspired by some crocuses popping up outside the studio. So what we're gonna use here is mostly purple, but you can also touch in some blue tones. You can touch in some pink tones. 
and then we need just a little bit of white and a yellow or orange for the center of the crocuses. So that was the inspiration, but we're just going to do one bloom. So I have a palette set up here with a really dark purple, a lighter purple, and some white so that I can lighten up and make a tint of each of these colors. And then I have a little bit of a blue to go into the blue tones and I have a little pink. And what this is really based on, I wanted you to just see this really quickly. I design stencils for Stencil Girl products and this is a stencil that I did a year ago not even thinking about crocuses when I designed this stencil. This one's called Playful Petal Petals, Playful Petals. <laughs> and it's a six by six inch stencil. Um, but what I wanted to draw your attention here to is the shape of the petal that we're going to be making. So it almost looks like an upside down teardrop that's connected to a stem but they're kind of loopy petals and so fun to make. And like I said, that wasn't in my mind when I designed this stencil and I just happened to think, well, how perfect is that? That really works with what we're gonna try to accomplish here. Okay, so let's begin. Let's, um, actually, I'm gonna use this one just because I like the look of this. What do y'all think? Make that out of the way. So the first thing that we're gonna start with is our darker purple. And what we're going to attempt to do with this first petal is decide how large our bloom is gonna be. So if I wanted the, the top of this petal, loopy petal, to start about there, and maybe the stem came down about there, there's about equal distance in the green top and bottom. So we're just kind of deciding on our composition right now as far as how tall our crocus is going to be. Michael says, what if I don't have a stencil? What could I use? We are just um, freeforming this. So if you want to practice just making a loop, let's go to this one, just make a loop. I'm not actually going to use the stencil. I just wanted to show you that the basic shape, if you were to illustrate this, what that looks like. So think of it as an upside down teardrop. Okay. And we're going to start from the back and move forward. So the back is going to be your darkest purple. And then we're gonna add another loop. Now, if it's better for you to turn your paper or your canvas, go ahead and do that. If it's better for you to make your teardrop or your loop um, vertically, straight up and down, you can turn it, turn your work. So I'm gonna make my next loop here. And then I'm going to make another one on the left side. And just for kicks, I'm going to make it kind of blue. And notice you can let your brush do the hard work for you here. If you have it loaded with paint and press down, and then as you pull, lift up on the pressure. Really helps. Let the brush do it for you. Okay, so we have three darker petals. Now we're going to add some white. So we're going to layer on top a lighter version. Okay, now let's make this one right over the top another loopy petal. And then I'm going to pick up some blue just to vary 
the um, intensity of the color a little bit. Add some blue to this one on the right. We're going to do another petal. Okay, can we see that? So far so good? Yep. So far so good? Okay. Now, if I wanted to, I could come in with a really skinny brush, a real thin one, and it's almost pure white, just a little bit of lavender in there, and do a loop like that. You can fill it in. You know what, just for kicks, I'm going to add pink to this one. Let's put that one over here. Now, I'm being careful not to overwork this because I don't want to end up mixing my pink into that color in the background. But one thing that did in the mixed media piece if you turn your brush around and use the back of it see this is still wet and I can scribe through it is that coming up through the camera can you see that I can do a zoom in okay what I'm doing is I'm scribing paint I'm pulling it back a little bit so the green underneath is coming through can you see that or is it hard to see is there a glare Now we need some centers. I lost my white. I mixed it all together. <laughs> Let's put some white back. Everyone says that they can see and that it looks great. Okay, wonderful. I so appreciate that. All right. Sometimes I just kind of do a little offshoot there. You can get wild with these. Okay, now let's get the center in. The center, if you looked at a crocus, would be either orange or yellow. And I, I'm again turning my paintbrush around. I'm using the end. This is a way to cheat to get a, a, a circle. I'm going to take it and dot in my centers. If I wanted to, I could even pull it a little bit so it's not so perfect. And I, I tend to like things that aren't so perfect. So maybe one's there. Now we have to ground that, what is it called? Um, a stamen? I don't know, I have to go back to science class. Somebody, if you're a science teacher, tell me what that's called. It's not a bud. I'm thinking it's a stamen. I should have looked that up. But we need to connect that to the to the inside of the flower. So it comes together here. I'm getting entirely too much water here. Kind of lost some of that. Oof. There's a big glop of water right there in the center. This is where I would stop and grab my hair dryer <laughs> and dry this so I'm not mixing everything together into a muddy mess. Do you need one? No, I'm just going to work with this. Okay. We're going to move on to the to the grass background. And this is where we get to have some scribbly fun. I'm going to scribble it out. Okay, 
Are we ready? Yes, no? Still working on your petals? Okay, this is where the mixed media part comes in. You can grab an oil pastel or um, China marker. I like using these Neocolor. They're made by Karan, oh, I'm not even gonna pronounce that right, Karan Darsh. Um, Neocolors, and they are water soluble. Anything that says water soluble will work. Um, and what I'm gonna do is take the different colors here of green that I picked up, and I'm just gonna scribble in some um, blades of grass and shoots, okay? All different. Everyone's ready. Good, okay. Now this is the lightest one that I have. This is it looks yellowish. Chinese green is what it's called. It's just, it's like a chartreuse. And that is fun, 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 like it. Okay, another way that you can do this if you don't have anything like a pastel or a neocolor is you can take an old plastic card, um, like an old gift card or hotel room key, old expired credit card, and take your lighter colors of the green and drag the card through it and pull. You see that? And what I'm doing is trying to get this to look natural because some of the blades of grass are going to be in front of the crocus, in front of the bloom, and some are gonna be back behind it. So this is still kind of wet. Actually, I wanna lighten this up with some white. But think about what materials you have around the house that you could grab and make art with. Let's come back in here and get some darker. Now, could I do this with a brush? Sure, I could. But sometimes it's fun just to experiment and see what you can do. Oh, I like that. So yes, I could use a brush I could come in here and make some of those random dashes. So depending on the size of your crocus, the size of your substrate, meaning what you chose to make your painting on, you could make this on the front of a greeting card. You could make these on small place cards if you're having a if you're celebrating easter this weekend and you're having a fancy dinner for easter if you celebrate that or sunday dinner you could make a little crocus on everybody's place card when is easter i forgot easter is sunday this sunday yeah i know we lose track of days <laughs> well, we've been trapped inside for so long i know i know Okay, so the last thing that I wanna to talk to you about is how to modify this loopy petal technique um, for different color palettes. So this is more of an abstract piece that I did 
a while ago and if you look at this this design here so just to review you can see the loopy petals just to review you're going to put your background color down first then you're going to take your predominant color which in this case is pink magenta and have that available in several different shades so have a darker a medium tone and a lighter which you can just use white paint to mix into that and then you can start making your loopy petals working from the back to the foreground. And in this case, I did put in, I scratched in some of the water soluble, in this case, I think it's pencil. I don't think it was the Neo Color crayon. Amy says, nice idea to make pretty place cards. Yeah, yeah, or make somebody a, a card. Brighten their day, send it through the mail. Or actually, May Day's coming up. Anybody used to do the uh, May Day baskets and leave them on their neighbor's door uh, door handle and ring the doorbell and run? That used to be something we used to do. <laughs> Ding dong ditch, but if you um, go through with it, the other person gets goodies. Right, a nice surprise. Okay, so does anybody have any questions before we sign off? Do you want me to show you how to use um, a stencil, just in case you want to learn how to do a stencil? Anybody? You good? Yeah. All right, Remember, there, there is a be decent. A, there is a delay. I keep forgetting about that. I'm ahead of you guys just a little bit. By 20 seconds or more. Okay. Well, Grant, do you see a sleeve of white sponges over there um hold on let me look for them okay, right here. Right here. hold well, please we have these yes grab one of those yeah, okay, well, i found them okay perfect all right any questions not currently okay well, I am just going to demonstrate the stencil just in case people have stencils to use other ways and then we will wrap this up. So here's my stencil and I'm going to do this design here. Amy says, where would you suggest getting plant, sorry, paint and other supplies these days? You know, you can order them from Michael's. I think Michael's is doing a curbside pickup right now where you can order on their website and they'll bring it out to your car. And this is Americana paint that I bought at Michael's, which is a fine, you know, craft paint, acrylic paint. Anything that's acrylic is gonna be opaque and you're gonna be able to layer like I did here. Um, and let it dry and go back and, and do more layers. So Americana is a good brand. Um, of course, Blick is a place where I get a lot of my uh, Liquitex paints and all of my other favorites. Um, even the Martha Stewart brand is a good acrylic craft paint, not very expensive and really performs well when you're doing something like this. Artist Loft is the, sorry, this is really messy and well loved. Artist Loft is the Michaels brand of um, acrylic paint that is like a student grade. Liquitex also makes a student grade basics, it's called Liquitex Basics. Okay, so I'm gonna grab, this is a cosmetic wedge sponge for applying um, makeup. And I am going to tap this into, I made a mess here. I'm going to tap this into my pink, but then I'm going to tap most of it off so that it's a drier sponge. And then I'm going to pounce it through the stencil.
This is going to be a little bit of a challenge to get these up here. But really this is just going to be an outline of my flower. Wow, that looks pretty. So then I can come in and add light and shadow. And really, you know, the, the stencil is just kind of a suggestion and you can take it from there and make it your own stencils are used so many different ways in mixed media you could spend just hours and hours and hours playing around with the different techniques that you can use again look around your house with different things that you can stencil through i'm sure that you might have like a strawberry container that's got a plastic mesh that you could use and do all sorts of things with. Okay? All right, any questions? We will see. Okay, why don't we flip the camera back up and we will bid you farewell. If you do think of any questions, or like I said, if you're catching this on the replay, go ahead and post in the comments. Um, there are lots and lots and lots of mixed media techniques, and I look forward to doing more with you because there are it's endless. We could be here all afternoon. So signing off from Periwinkle Art Studio. Be safe, be well, and do something creative to keep your mind active. Bye, everybody.